have to have strong interest in how everything really does work. The more sincere interest you have, the less distractions pull you away. They'll still come up, but you start to see them more and more quickly all the time. And they always arise in exactly the same way. And I get in trouble in Asia telling people that because they think their mind is different than the Western mind. And it's not. And they think, well, you're a Westerner. Why are you playing around with Buddhism? That's an Eastern religion. No, it's not. One, it's not a religion. And two, it's the sharpest, clearest observation of how things actually work that I've ever run across. And it gets more and more interesting the deeper you go. It's really kind of phenomenal. And your understanding starts to grow as you become more and more familiar with how this process works. You start to notice it in everything. All of the sights, all of the sounds, Taste, touch, uh, smell, and thoughts. Well, these thoughts, they keep coming up. Whose thoughts are they? How did it happen? Did you ask for these thoughts to come up? You say, well, I have this situation where I'm really worried. Who's worried? Who's taking their thoughts and their feelings personally? Who's trying to control their thoughts and their feelings? Who's causing them self-pain? You can't blame anything out there for the suffering that you have. You have to understand how this process works. And you're teaching yourself when you have hindrances. You're teaching yourself how this process works. And you're teaching yourself this is really impersonal. I didn't ask for this. I didn't sit and tell myself, well, it's time to get worried because this situation or that. It arises by itself. One of, one of the things in Sutta number 19 that's very interesting, it says, what you think and ponder on, that is the inclination of your mind. So if you have worry or fear or anxiety or anger, the more you think about it, the more it comes up. The more you're causing yourself pain. There's an easy way, there, nah, I'll take that back. There's a simple way to let go of that. What's the simple way to let it go? Using the six R's. So the more you use the six R's, the less suffering you cause yourself. So it's a real interesting process when you can see it clearly. 
Now, it doesn't matter what hindrance it is that arises. A hindrance is a hindrance is a hindrance. It's what you do with that when it distracts your attention away from your object of meditation. That's the part that's real interesting. And as you become familiar, like restlessness doesn't go away with one six R. A lot of people like to use the six R's as a stick to beat things away. Well, I use the six R's on it and it still came up again. Well, yeah. How attached are you? The six R's are not there for your control. They're there so you can observe how this process works. There's contact, there's feeling, there's craving, there's clinging, there's habitual tendency, there's the birth of action, and then there's the suffering. And it happens fast, and it happens often. As long as you take this personally, 